डिजिटलाइजेशन सर्विस डिलीवरी एंड कम्युनिकेशन फोर कंसेप्ट आर इन्वॉल्व इन दिस टाइटल फर्स्ट इज डिजिटलाइजेशन सेकेंड इज वॉट इज सर्विस देन थर्ड इज सर्विस डिलीवरी एंड द फोर्थ इज कम्युनिकेशन वाइल डिलीवरिंग द सर्विस बिटवीन द पर्सन और द इंस्टीट्यूशन विच डिलीवर्स द सर्विस एंड द क्लाइंट और द रिसिपियंट ऑफ द सर्विस सो फोर कंसेप्ट आर इन्वॉल्व विल स्टार्ट विथ वॉट इज डिजिटलाइजेशन नो सी दिस पिरामिड digitization is at the foundational level then about digitization is digitalization uh, this is american spelling you can use s also instead of z so digitization based on that digitalization and finally digital transformation so the author i will give you the reference of this article the author of this article says that this is the digital transformation pyramid digitization and digitalization they are considered by synonyms even standard dictionaries like the oxford and the cambridge dictionary the merriam webster dictionary they consider these two concepts two terms as synonyms but there is a difference digitalization or digitization is foundational this is the connection between the physical world and the software that is what we been we have been doing since the 1960s the converting handwritten documents printed documents by the use of scanners ocr and omr scanners optical character readers and optical mark readers optical character readers can transform printed documents in editable documents word documents or html documents to edit a pdf document is very difficult to uh, so editing a word document is comparatively very easy so optical character readers they can transform a printed document into a word document or say any other word processor <coughs> it can transform it into simple text and that can be imported into any word processor microsoft word is the popular or famous word processor but there are many other word processors also but once the printed document is converted into simple text it can be imported in any word processor now available in the world and then that can be stored that can be sent anywhere in the world that can be checked for grammatical mistakes spelling mistakes now here comes digitalization digitalization refers to enabling or improving processes by leveraging digital technologies and digitized data therefore digitalization presumes digitization now a word processor is connected to a dictionary so it checks each and every word you can have a count of words then you can link the words to further improve the quality overall quality of the document now uh, if there is a name president of america first president of america george washington you can hyperlink the word and you can attach or redirect the reader to get more information about george washington or the post of president of usa 
so you can hyperlink the word you can check it check the document for grammatical corrections you can explore each and every word in the dictionary in the thesaurus or in the web so analysis and now once you have the text in the word processor in html you can edit it you can keep it up to date or update it in real time you can add images to it you can add audio video and make it a rich multimedia document so these are the benefits of digitalization and digital transformation is really business transformation enabled by digitalization so digital transformation is complete use of digital technology in whatever business or uh, factory or department you are working in teaching we have experienced this for the last whole year lectures were online exams were online results were declared online and mark sheets were also sent online so all your documents were online all the teaching process was online you paid the fees online all colleges and universities have not updated but many of them have done it so that we can call a digital transformation there may be different levels teachers students and other participants they must also improve themselves they must also adapt to the new changes these are the three articles on the basis of which i differentiated between digitization and digitalization so please go through all these three articles the third one is about the fourth industrial revolution this is a novel concept so first industrial revolution that was in england where uh, england went from farming to factories that was the first in 18th century <coughs> and then second third and fourth everything is explained here in this article wikipedia article there are further references there is a an original article reference to an original article in foreign affairs uh, where the term fourth industrial revolution was coined for the first time so go through all these articles and you will understand better understand the difference between digitization and digitalization so the concept used in our syllabus is digitalization not only digitization now we'll come to the second concept that what are the services before considering the second concept we'll consider some more benefits of digitalization take the example of conducting examinations i'm taking this example because i have gone through all this process throughout the last year we have conducted exam examinations 3 to 4 times there was no restriction of classroom availability no necessity of classrooms students appear for the examination on their mobile phones and they were located all over maharashtra 
they had gone to their native places so they were spread across all regions of maharashtra remote monitoring is also possible if you use quality soft software you can completely control the student of course there are some problems in the whole system students must have uh, better devices to appear for the examination and that is a basic requirement but the assessment part is totally eliminated so this is transformation of the examination process while setting up the paper it was based on mcqs multiple choice questions so we have we had set the answers while setting the question paper itself the software looked after the assessment part and a ready made mark list was provided to each and every teacher that was consolidated and the results were declared so result declaration was very much fast upsc and mpsc have used this digital technology for conducting their examinations it is not possible to have computers for each and every candidate the number of candidates is more than 1 lakh in case of upsc and it is in thousands in case of mpsc so they have used a different technology question papers are printed on a paper as usual uh this is of course used in objective tests where multiple choice questions are used multiple choice questions are set in the question paper each question has four options normally and there is a circle in front of each option the student has to mark the circle with a hard black pencil then the whole paper is scanned through an optical mark reader a special type of scanner omr or optical mark reader it reads the marked circles and decides whether the answer was correct or wrong and marks are assigned to that particular paper accordingly so assessment is very fast and then again result declaration is the time taken to declare result is significantly reduced it has been observed worldwide that private companies make use of advanced technologies in a better manner they invest in these advanced technologies they in innovate they have their r and d departments research and development so they invest on r and d also <coughs> you can see the example of the fang companies f a a n g the facebook amazon apple netflix and google now alphabet so these companies f a a n g giants american giants they have based their business solely on technology then there are credit card companies the mastercard and visa they have a worldwide network they have networked with local banks and they issue credit cards debit cards 
forex cards all sorts of cards issued by these companies and there is no problem no server hanging or nothing like that we see that uh, in our colleges schools students fill scholarship forms those scholarship forms they take at least two or three days because the questions asked in the form are not clear student or the concerned teacher or the office staff is not able to understand what is demanded what is the question then the form is i think blocked at a certain stage you have to return to the beginning and start again so it is not submitted the image file has to be in a certain format has to be of uh, minimum size that is not clearly written there so you have to guess it and you have to keep trying keep uploading various sizes and various formats of images so these things never happen in case of these credit card companies or these technology giants the facebook amazon apple netflix google youtube service it has changed the world of entertainment a few years back i referred to uh, two films one was on narmada bachao andolan and other was on the babri masjid issue <coughs> two great films documentary films directed and produced by a veteran director <coughs> so they were not available in the market openly so i contacted many of my friends one of them gave me the contact of that director then i went to his home i talked with him and then he gave me the dvds of his documentary films now after 10 or 15 years i was again referring to i wanted to refer to those two films in some context i just searched on youtube and i got links to both the films both the films were available on youtube i just forwarded forwarded the link links to the students and my job was done mm. so before 10 to 15 years it took almost 2 weeks to get my hand on that cd and now within 5 minutes i had sent the links to my students so this is revolution technological revolution <coughs> you can see there are fintech companies paytm phone pay they used they use financial uh, services they provide financial services and use technology to provide those financial services they have no branches brick and mortar offices they have no offline business at all you have to register through your mobile your identity is established through your mobile the ip address and all those technical things and then all services are delivered to your mobile that is very convenient 
on 15th february this year uh, fast tag was made compulsory on toll nakas i was traveling from mumbai to pune and all of a sudden i saw the board that from today it is compulsory to have fast tag now suddenly an agent cropped up he said you can still buy the fast tag you need not go to the bank or need not go to any office so he transacted then and there used a uh, image he scanned my aadhar card my driving license with the use with the help of his phone i paid him some token money which which was uh, asked for the tag was issued free of cost and they my task was done i had no problem crossing over the toll naka so this is possible because of the advanced technology this is known as service convenient service delivery <coughs> i required the services of fast tag and it was delivered immediately without any hurdle without any problem on the spot so ideally each and every service you require should be delivered on the spot without any issues and without any problems we'll consider the example of zomato <coughs> zomato as you know you must have experienced it you must have used it for so many times food delivery service you can access that service through the mobile app basically majority of the people access it through the mobile app they also have their website they have comprehensive databases of hotels all over india food items customers locations employees and they also have online payment services we have seen the concept of digitalization now we have to understand the concepts of service delivery and communication so we'll look after these two concepts with the example of zomato <coughs> delivery of service and communication see we'll go through the whole process and you will understand both this both these concepts what do you do you download the app or access the website on the net with a connected device with a device of your choice which is connected to the internet it may be a mobile <coughs> we'll consider for this example you are accessing the zomato services through your mobile app what do you do you first re register yourself you receive an otp your as identity is established digital identity of course your home and office address is recorded the app asks for the permission to access your current location and that is very important for this app dynamic services are possible because uh, with the help of these uh, this access access to your current location then the app offers payment options you can register or save your card or net banking details if you want that is optional of of course then it provides a list of available hotels in the area where you are because the app accesses your current location and then 
it provides a list of hotels in that particular area it is not limited to your home address or office address that which you registered during the registration process <coughs> it provides hotels in the area if your home is in mumbai and office is, is somewhere in lonaw and you are traveling somewhere in satara <coughs> so now the zomato app will provide applic provide information about hotels in satara it will also provide timings whether the hotel is open now and when will it shut down or when will it close it provides menu and the prices besides all these things comments by other users and ratings are also given that helps in a great way to decide about a good hotel then once you place your order order tracking system shows you how the order is being processed that the delivery boy has been selected the delivery boy the hotel has handed over your package to the delivery boy and the delivery boy has started traveling towards your destination he will reach within 30 minutes within 15 minutes within 10 minutes and he is at your doorstep so this is delivery of service and communication while delivering service the app is in constant contact with you till you receive your order if something is not functioning if the delivery boy has some problems if there is heavy traffic even that is communicated to you that it will be the order your order will be late the delivery boy will come late by 10 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes and accordingly the system functions so you are always communicated you are always updated you have the mobile number of the delivery person maybe a boy or a girl your number is exchanged with that delivery person and finally you receive the order completion message and also you can give tips online tips to the delivery person there are successful examples of government services railway reservation service most successful service delivery and communication also you can book a railway ticket for mumbai now you are located somewhere in europe and you want you are returning india and you want to travel from pune to mumbai or mumbai to pune you can book your ticket from europe there is no problem at all you can book your ticket from anywhere in the world you can have all the choices the irctc app has been updated so many times the servers 
the capacity was enhanced so now it functions smoothly <coughs> so you can have a railway reservation then if there is a change in the uh, timings it is immediately communicated to you you can order food you have to just provide your pnr number and on the basis of that pnr number the delivery person will deliver your food at the appropriate station then banking services private banks and even nationalized banks they provide net banking services to all their customers i have not visited my bank uh, branch my bank branch for so many years the concept of passbook has become outdated because you have a real time balance checking facility you can download statements historical statements whenever and wherever you require you can download pdfs you can print them and send them wherever wherever you want so no need of a uh, passbook no need need of visiting the branch again and again standing in lines standing in long queues quarreling with others so everything is stopped still the branches function still there are people who are not used to these online things especially elder people they prefer face to face contact and that is a emotional requirement so they approach the bank branch some functionalities for some functionalities all the customers have to approach the branch but otherwise banking is totally online insurance even lic because now as insurance has been the insurance sector has been opened up liberalized since the 1990s there are many private companies multinational insurance companies they offer advanced facilities but even lic the government insurer also offers online services you can pay pay premium of your policy from any place in india or any place in the world you can get the benefits deposited directly into your bank account then services like issuing a driving license you have to physically you have to be physically present only while taking the test all other formalities are completed online you can fill the form you can attach documents you can pay the fee you can fix your appointment and then go straight away on that particular day on that particular time at at that particular time and take the test your license is delivered at your home and now government of india has started one more facility that is the digi locker <coughs> you can upload your license to the digi locker or if you establish your identity your license is a soft copy of your license is automatically saved to your account now you can then download it you can use it or you can print and use it 
the world of entertainment over the top platforms ott platforms netflix yeah. amazon prime z5 you must have heard a lot about all these platforms particularly in the last year many films were uh, inaugurated on the ott platform now with the comfort of your home from the comfort of your home you can watch movies if you have home theater facilities they're well and good otherwise you can <coughs> watch the movies on your mobile phones also on your laptops and pcs <coughs> the atmosphere of the cinema hall that is a different thing you will miss that but still you can watch your favorite movie at your home passport services in india the government has revolutionized the passport service the passport branch it operates under public private partnership the tata group has been given responsibilities particularly in mumbai i have seen it if you want to register or if you want to have your passport go to the website fill in the form fill in the details attach the documents pay the fees fix your appointment and then on that particular day you go to the office there are sections everybody knows that at this time these will be the 10 clients or 10 citizens applying for passport so their details are already on their desktop they verify it the procedure is completed within half an hour and you are free your passport is delivered to your home after completion of police verification and all other formalities so passport delivery has become a very smooth process income tax returns for last 10 years the process is evolving <coughs> i have seen long queues long queues many employees at the office of a particular ca they used to visit the income tax office stand in long queues for two or three days continuously and then complete their work now all that has gone e returns are filed and see the feedback on the income tax site you can visit the site the link is there i will give this presentation to you the site is very user friendly and updates are given timely i am using this site for e filing of returns since last 6 years and find easy and timely processing of refund orders i had an issue of non credit of my advance tax for assessment year 2019-20 which got resolved through e nirvan e nivaran with within time frame thanks Uh, this is a feedback given on 5th of february 2019 second one really amazed to experience and the way it return and tax filing have been made easy on the website many thanks to the department for making this possible we need to emulate this across the country for making our citizens more empowered this is true example of digital india and the third one 
This year, ITR filing is user friendly. Everything crystal clear. Effort of the team is appreciated. Now, these are the comments of the users about the service delivery. So, these are examples of good service delivery. Fast tag, I discussed this. Banking and insurance, we already discussed that point. Then vehicle insurance and travel insurance beside life insurance, it is also possible to have online. Net banking now also includes share trading. Banks now also have DMAT accounts and trading accounts and you can trade in securities on the National Stock Exchange or the Bombay Stock Exchange or any other stock exchange of your choice. Now I think in some areas, in some cities, uh, they have also started international trading. But there are some limitations about that. But all these services are delivered to the citizens of India. Then we have already talked about uh, the passport service. The last point I had to make, the history of digitization or digitalization. Computerization, computers started in the 1940s. Then the internet was born in the 1970s in USA. Ah, and there is a difference between the internet and the web. This is an ideal book to understand the difference. Tim Berners-Lee, he is regarded as the founder of the World Wide Web, WWW, uh, at the beginning of almost all the sites. You have to put www. Now, uh, HTTP or HTTPS. But www is the beginning of almost all the sites. That is a framework to develop web applications. Internet is the network of computers. Network of networks. That is the internet. The World Wide Web is a platform to develop applications and that platform was developed by this person Tim Berners-Lee in the 1990s. And finally an interesting link about the GPS, the Global Positional Positioning System. The GPS is an American system. Now the Russians also have the GLONASS and we have the NAVIC, NAVIC or IRNSS. So read about the GPS, it is a constellation of four or more satellites which provides exact location to any GPS receiver on the earth. Initially, it was designed for the military and now it is open to all. It is freely available to all people. It is a gift from the US government to the world. So GPS, it has enabled many apps. The Google Maps is one of them. So we have completed one part of the module that is digitalization, service delivery and communication.